Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our second Lunch and Learn. It looks like we have a great turnout. I appreciate everyone logging in this afternoon. Uh, today, we are going to discuss uh, a little bit about going outside of the box. Um, you have requested some uh, information on additional sourcing methods and, and ways to drum up some passive uh, or maybe active candidates that are not on the traditional job boards, while they are a great option, um, we're just going to delve into a little bit more outside-the-box uh, ways of trying to source some candidates for your open position. Um, we're going to also be covering some different tech uh, and tools that you can use for trying to find some other passive candidates, uh, groups, and, and other different sites and places you can go. And uh, these are all keys for success in making the best quality placements that we can all make. So some housekeeping items. Please use the questions box to ask any questions throughout the webinar. We may not be able to get to them real time. We will be doing a little bit of Q&A at the end of the broadcast. I am Lori Bradsell. Uh, Director of Strategic Accounts, and with me is Komal Masani, as, as most of you know, um, and also Scott Poniwa is our Director of uh, Community Outreach. Community. Sure, Director of Community. Um, and again, I come with 20 years of experience in staffing um, as a Vice President of a staffing firm uh, prior to this role and um, been in client services for 20 years. So in our Lunch and Learn series, today we are talking about finding the right candidate. Um, in our nine steps to success, this is number three, and we're just going to dive right in. So the why. Let's do some non-traditional sourcing. Uh, sourcing, sourcing methods, sorry. Um, unemployment is at it's lowest, it's a war for talent out there, and everyone is looking for the best of the best while candidates are not even looking for a new job. So great recruiting relies on great candidate relationships, that trust factor, that going back, you know, these histories that you've built with relationships with candidates and referrals. And right, the non-traditional, I'm sorry, the traditional way, everyone is fishing from the same pond, so using all the same major job boards, career builder, monster dice, all of them, everyone is just, it's, it's all a, a speed game. Who's going to get to that candidate first? And then we're going to talk a little bit about your personal brand, super important when you are using non-traditional sourcing methods. So before you even go searching for your candidate, please, we need to make sure we are researching the client and the job. Know that job description in and out. And that here at, at Reflick is part of our responsibility is to try to get you the most up-to-date and vital information on each and every job that we get from our client. Understanding the client, who they are, what they do, so you can speak intelligently to your candidate. Explore the industry. Know who the competitors are, uh, who are the key uh, um, competitors that you would want to see on a LinkedIn profile or a resume. Asking for tons of details. If you are not clear on the job description, please do not hesitate to reach out to any one of the account managers here to get more detailed information. We would be happy to do so if we don't have it already. And then prepare your outreach plan. How are you going to uh, Post your job. How are you going to get it out to your market of passive and active candidates? So this is a big one for me. Um, these are some successful sourcing methods using social media. Leverage the power of social media. Uh, we have all, it's always at our fingertips. Why not use it? Uh, but with that, you want to keep it professional. Uh, this is where we're going to get into a little bit deeper into your personal brand. But you want to, a lot of people use 
your social media outlets for very personal information. If you are going to use that as a method for sourcing, please try to button up your personal brand and keep it more of a professional tone. I have all, almost all of my clients on my social media, and I just post about things that are non-controversial. Uh, use a variety of different outlets to increase inbound candidate prospects. Instagram. I just looked at my personal, I have an Instagram account. It's called Get a Job With Me. And I have not posted any specific job postings, just some photos and a bunch of hashtags, and I have 104 followers. So it's an untapped market using Instagram. You can drum up so many passive candidates that may be looking for a job in a non-traditional way because they don't want to put their resume on the job board. Facebook, everybody knows the power of Facebook. We're using it for everything, for events, for, I can't think of a birthday party that I have gone to that I haven't had to RSVP via Facebook lately. Snapchat, that's where the younger people are. That's where everyone is. So that's where you need to be posting your job. The same for Twitter. And then there's some more niche sites like GitHub for developers and Behance for creative type folks. Learn how to do Boolean searches. I'm not going to go into all the details here, but I know that this was a hot topic and what a lot of people wanted to see. Um, we will be publishing the deck and uh, a copy of this uh, recording of this webinar for your uh, review and reference, but Boolean searches are a way for you to combine words and phrases um, within Google searches or which, whichever method that you are using uh, within GitHub and all of these other things to try to weed out the candidates that match the job description. And you can, we'll provide this to you for reference. So I'm just going to skip over that and send it on. One of the most powerful ways for sourcing is referrals. Uh, develop a consistent referral policy. Uh, make it very specific for the candidate, for the employer. Rewards, you can do gift cards, you can do cash, prizes, or anything to try to drum up more referral candidates. And always, always, always be recruiting. Friends, family, uh, current and former candidates, bank teller, even your Uber driver. And we put that in there because I actually was on my way to the airport and I recruited my Uber driver for a position at a large pharmaceutical company I was supporting at the time. And he is still very happily employed there and still driving Uber on the side. Um, join and host events. Again, network, network, network. Be always out there joining um, different groups. You're going to want to network before you have the job. You want to have these networks of people prior to even knowing what the job is that, that you're going to be recruiting for. Meetup groups uh, in, in niche skills, webinars, LinkedIn and Facebook groups. But most importantly, when you do join those groups, give some sort of contribution that is not just posting your jobs. Be authentic, provide insight, comment on other people's posts, and try to be a real active member in those groups. Now, this is a, another thing that's very dear to my heart is your personal brand. You have control over your personal brand with all of the privacy settings on any of these social media links, you have control over how you appear to your public. Um, think before you post. This is what we like to call the grandma check. Don't post anything that you wouldn't want your grandmother to see. That's my rule of thumb. And then monitor yourself. Google yourself regularly. Make sure you have Google alerts set up for yourself. Um, if you have a company, if you're an independent recruiter and you're incorporated, make sure you set up Google alerts for your company so you can thwart off any negative reviews or anything that come up. And then get yourself out there. Uh, I mean, we're all out there. Create a positive impact on, um, on the web and on social media. And then one that we talk about here all the time, 
and one that in that you guys are all recruiters I'm sure you've come across this please make sure that you're using a professional email address and or domain and send this message to your candidate it's never a good idea to use a uh, an email address that just doesn't come across as a professional one when you're sending a resume to a client if you see a candidate that has you know, car guy 12 as their email address, please go back and ask them to change their, you know, create a new more professional email address and, uh, and send that along to the client. And create a simple website landing page about your company if you're, if you're an incorporated or um, independent recruiter. And then I'll pass it over to Scott to talk a little bit more about some tech and tools. All right. Thanks, Lori. Um, so yeah, obviously there are some of the standard tools that Lori alluded to at the beginning. You know, the traditional job boards, the, the Google searches, LinkedIn, um, even Zoom info that a lot of you are probably already using to try and find and source candidates. Um, so we actually kind of took it a step beyond that and um, are trying to present a couple more ideas for you that can help you. Um, so we just highlighted a few of these and. Um, we have a full comprehensive blog post um, that you can access using that um, sourcing tools uh, URL down there at the bottom. Um, real quickly from a high level, um, find that lead and data miner are both great for finding email addresses and, and scraping data off the web that might not be in some of those other sites to make your job a little bit more efficient. Text kernel also helps you parse resumes and, and sort of bring it into other sources um, Calendly helps save some of the back and forth and saves you some time when you're doing candidate outreach so that they can just easily schedule calls with you um, based on their availability and on your calendar, so as long as it's kept up to date. Eventbrite and Meetup are both great ways to um, find some of those niche events. So if you're looking for an Android developer, um, Go hang out at Android developer events in your local community and start to develop those networking um, skills and, and relationships with those people. Um, meetup groups, same thing. Um, Shaper is um, a little bit like Tinder, but it's actually professional. So in there, people can actually specify if they're looking for business opportunities, career opportunities, partnerships, sales. So that's a great, um, great way to uncover new people to meet. Um, Grammarly, this one checks your grammar on the fly and in the Chrome plugin and it can tap into your email addresses or email accounts and make sure that you're not making any glaring um, spelling mistakes. And then um, to Lori's point, social media is a big one um, for you to be tapping into and, and using, but sometimes it's always, oh, I don't have time to post on social media or to monitor social media. Hootsuite, um, a lot of people I know will just, you know, schedule some posts um, an hour or two throughout the week and um, just do it in a block of time and, and be able to post and schedule and um, maintain their social media that way. So those are a few of the, the tools to keep an eye out for. And again, there's, there's more on some of those other, or on that uh, link that we shared at the bottom there. So um, recently, um, we caught up with one of our recruiters, and again, on our blog, we have um, a full interview with uh, Christopher here, um, but he and his agency, um, which is based out of Colorado, recently filled a job with North American Dental Group, and he talked about some of his keys to successfully um, uh, filling that role. So uh, as you can see here, you know, he touches on a lot of the, the main points that um, that Laurie just, uh, just touched, in, touched on. Um, and a lot of those are really paying attention to those details about a candidate. So making sure that you're understanding why that candidate. So, um, yeah, so once um, you do have that relationship, you know, you do have to also make sure, as Christopher mentions here, that you're following through throughout the process. So 
Um, with that, I'll turn it back over to Laurie to. All right. Um, that is our lunch and learn session for this month. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, recap. No one understand the job and company. Do that research. Understand the industry, the competitors, and more specifically, what is in the job description that you are going to need to vet out for your candidates. Network, network, network. I said that before, and I'll say it again. Be out there. Be everywhere. Be recruiting all the time. Um, and control your personal brand. It is under your control, so make sure you do that. And again, I can't stress the Google Alerts enough. Um, make sure that you know what's happening with your social media and your online presence. And then leverage the technology and tools that you know and that we're providing to you. Uh, we are a resource for you. You can always give us any one of us a call at any time. Um, and again, we're going to publish a recording of this webinar and this deck for you to look at so you can look at those Boolean searches and again, the the technology and tools we've provided and the link to the blog post. So with that, I'll take any questions that you may have. Okay. All right. Um, yes, uh, somebody asked if this will be on the site. And it will be available to you. All right. Well, I guess um, that concludes our Lunch and Learn for this month. Uh, we will be um, asking you guys for additional in insight into what else you would like to see us cover in next month's webinar. And um, if you have any additional questions, concerns, comments, please feel free to reach out to any one of us directly. And you can always reach us at recruiteralliance at reflect.com.